Welcome to the Archaeology Studio. Today's episode considers the stone reliefs of Ashurnasirpal II, specifically as seen in the collections from the Northwest Palace at Kalhu, also known as Nimrud. By the end of this episode, you will be prepared to describe what was depicted at the Northwest Palace, and you can discuss what those images represent about ancient life at 879 through 859 BC. With this information, you can develop further research questions. Ashur Nasirpal II was king of Assyria, based in Mesopotamia. He built his capital city at Kalhu, sometimes referenced as Nimrud. Ashur Nasirpal II was one of many in a long succession of kings of Assyria. He ruled from 883 through 859 BC during the Iron Age of the region. In historical studies, this period generally has been understood as part of the Neo-Assyrian Kingdom. Ashurnasirpal II was perhaps most famous for expanding the size of the Assyrian Kingdom, installing his own loyal governors in those conquered lands, demanding tributes relocating and often enslaving conquered people, and building his new capital with royal palaces at Kalhu. Kalhu sometimes has been mentioned as Nimrud, the name of a nearby village. Previously, the capital of Assyria was at Assyr, then at Nineveh before moving to Kalhu with Ashurnasirpal II in 859 BC. This kingdom was contemporary with the Egyptian, Phoenician, Greek, and other settlements around the Mediterranean and Mesopotamia, with vast amounts of written records in diverse forms. Around 600 12 BC, the Medes and Babylonian people revolted against the Assyrian kingdom, and they won a decisive victory at the Battle of Nineveh. By 609 BC, the Assyrian kingdom met its demise. Kalhu was one of the places that became abandoned and proceeded into decay. More than 2,000 years later, in 1845, the archaeologist Austin Henry Layard rediscovered the site and initiated a massive recovery operation. In 1949, Malawan organized more excavations at the site, and periodic studies and preservation efforts have followed since then. More recently, reports of deliberate destruction and looting have occurred during political unrest in the region. Today, most of our knowledge about ancient Kalhu comes from the early work by Layard, augmented by Malawan's studies. The large-scale recovery efforts had revealed to the world what the city looked like, how the palaces were organized, and how they were decorated in detail. The architectural historian James Ferguson produced a series of artistic renderings that metaphorically resurrected the city back to life. The ruins of Kalhu were extensive, covering about 360 hectares. Within this large and complex capital city, one of the best preserved areas was the Northwest Palace, and it can be regarded as one coherent unit of the larger site. The time frame can be identified precisely within a narrow window of 879 through 859 BC, and many of the individual artwork components 
can be assigned to an even narrower range of a few years. The stone sculptures and relief slabs of the palace were the largest and most durable components. They depict the world as known to Ashurnasir Paul II. Several of these items have been distributed among museum collections all around the globe today. The stone relief slabs have been informative not only for their artwork, but also for their cuneiform inscriptions. The standard inscription of King Ashurnasirpal II was shown in almost every relief panel in the Northwest Palace. The cuneiform inscription was identical in every case, with extremely rare exceptions of slight variations. The standard inscription was rather long, traditionally translated into English as seven paragraphs. The opening paragraph establishes the king's royal lineage, with reference to some of the prior kings of Assyria. Additionally, this part celebrates the king's success as a conqueror. The next paragraph outlines the geographic scope of the kingdom, with special attention to the places and the people conquered and subjugated by Ashurnasirpal II. The territorial expansion is portrayed as the divine duty of the king, assigned by the national god Ashur. The third paragraph mentions the lands that previously were part of the Assyrian kingdom, then were lost, but they were reclaimed by force under Ashurnasirpal II. The inscription here specifies that loyal governors of the king were installed in these lands. The fourth paragraph, around the middle of the cuneiform inscription, opens with the king's words in the first person, I am Ashurnasirpal. Here, the king proclaims himself as divinely powerful, essentially destined to rule the world. The next paragraph identifies the palace location at Kalhu, noting that the city had been abandoned for some time before Ashurnasirpal II rebuilt it as a capital city with royal palaces. The inscription notes how the people from conquered lands were relocated into this new capital city. The sixth paragraph describes the construction of the new capital city as monumental. The palace is mentioned as the everlasting home of the king. The seventh and final paragraph mentions how the artwork in the palace reflects the extent of the world conquered and tamed by King Ashurnasirpal II. From that conquered world, the spoils of war filled the royal treasury. The standard inscription describes the breadth and depth of the king's power and authority, often referring to the gods and the divine right or duty of the king. These sentiments are reinforced by the accompanying artwork in the relief slabs, often using religious ideology and iconography to justify the king's power especially in acts of conquest and subjugation. As may be expected of any governing leaders, Assyrian kings were responsible for defending their lands, and especially the productive farmlands. In this context, the royal duty became interpreted as involving campaigns of war to expand the amount of territory giving allegiance to the national god Assur, linked of course with the king. The national god Assur was represented as the disk of the sun, shown here with feathered wings, and the image of a man in the form of a warrior. Other depictions use variants of an archer, 
and sometimes a horned bull. Symbolically, the god Assur brought prosperity to the lands, including newly conquered lands, linked with the power and responsibility of the king. Over the years, kings enacted different policies for the treatment of conquered people. In perhaps the most benevolent policy stance, people were absorbed into the kingdom, and they continued living in their homes and performing mostly their same tasks and roles with new allegiance to the Assyrian king. In many cases, people were compelled to offer tributes to the king. Sometimes non-conquered people would offer tributes in exchange for fair treatment or partnerships. Another policy evidently favored by King Ashurnasir Paul II involved forced relocation and redistribution of the conquered populations. Slavery seems to have been practiced in various forms, especially for royal projects and capital investments, such as the new capital city and royal palaces at Kahu. On the walls of the Northwest Palace, some of these stone relief panels show tribute bearers with attention to their personal appearances. In one such panel, two tribute bearers wear different head dressing, earring styles, and lengths of their robes. The figure on the right is bringing two monkeys. These details could be interpreted as clues about the origins of the tribute bearers coming to visit with the king at the royal palace. They were not depicted as captives, so most likely they traveled on their own accord to the palace. Their footwear indicates covered shoes or boots suitable for travel, unlike the open sandals shown for other local residents in the different relief panels. Whenever first entering a major gateway or doorway at the royal palace, people would see larger-than-life-size statues of protective deities known as Lamasu. The Lamasu were designed in pairs, guarding the left and right sides of key entrances. Lamasu were hybrids, with the body of a bull or lion, head of a person, and feathered wings. They represented star constellations or parent stars, and they embodied and protected all life within them. Inside the rooms of the Northwest Palace, King Ashurnasirpal II was depicted in several of these stone relief panels. One of the most complete panels displayed the standard inscription in cuneiform, over an image of the king holding his royal staff and a sword at his side. The royal regalia included the king's head dressing, long robe, body ornaments, and sandals. Another panel has survived as a fragment, but the head of the king can be seen in close detail. Protective spirits were depicted in many of the stone relief panels. They appeared in various forms, but most popular was a person's body with the head and wings of an eagle. Their clothing was similar to the royal regalia of long robes and body ornaments. Some wore sandals, but others were barefooted. Most often, they were shown in symmetrical pairs. They held objects of a bucket and a cone used in their sacred duty of attending the Tree of Life. The Tree of Life was depicted in a standardized form throughout the Northwest Palace. Sometimes it appeared by itself, but most often it was attended by pairs of protective spirits. Another form of protective spirit was shown as a woman with wings. These entities held a ring of beads in one hand, while the other hand was open for gesturing. 
Like the other protective spirits, they most often were depicted as symmetrical pairs, and mostly they attended to the Tree of Life. In other instances, the protective spirits attended to the king. As shown here, the eagle hybrid spirits attended to the king with the same bucket and cone that they used when treating the Tree of Life. Probably the most heavily symbolic stone relief panel was in the throne room of the Northwest Palace. This panel adorned the wall above and behind the throne. Even for visitors who were not familiar with Assyrian traditions or could not approach close enough to read the cuneiform of the king's standard inscription, the symbolism here was strong and unmistakable. King Ashurnasirpal II appears twice in symmetry around the Tree of Life. The king is attended by protective spirits that seem to resemble himself with feathered wings. The spirits attend to the king with their sacred bucket and cone, while the king's double image surrounds the tree of life. Meanwhile, the king's twin images are gesturing to the winged sun disk of the national god Ashur. The specific artistic expressions and details were unique to the Assyrian kingdom of this era, yet much of the core symbolism was shared throughout the ancient world of Mesopotamia and neighboring regions. Overall, the carved stonework offers a refined view of a narrow time range and context at the Northwest Palace of King Ashurnasirpal II from 879 through 859 BC. This context emphasized the authority of the king, linked with his religious power, specifically as related with the Tree of Life, protective spirits, and the national god Ashur. The inscriptions and symbols depicted the king's responsibilities for protecting the kingdom and for ensuring the productivity of farmlands, furthermore justifying the king's role in conquest and subjugation of an expanding kingdom. Given the intention to create an everlasting monument, the statues and relief panels were large and durable objects that essentially materialized the king's power into the Northwest Palace. In this sense, the ideological symbolism perhaps has been overrepresented, and other aspects of ancient life would need further study. This presentation has concentrated on the objects in the public exhibit at the British Museum, admired by thousands of people every year. Many more statues, stone relief panels, and other artifacts have been curated in numerous museums and institutions around the world. You can consider how each of those collections may reveal different aspects about ancient life at Kalhu or Nimrud. You could pursue questions about the political structure, religious beliefs, economic activities, and many other topics. Depending on your question or topic, you can identify what kinds of artifacts, inscriptions, or other evidence would be most relevant and convincing. In concluding this episode, now you should be familiar with the stone reliefs of King Ashurnasirpal II. You can describe what was depicted at the Northwest Palace. You can discuss what those images represent about ancient life of their time. And you can develop further research questions. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and that you will explore more with the Archaeology Studio.